Hello everybody, this is Mark with Pelican Wooden Things. Today we'll be discussing and demonstrating how I got all the voids filled with resin in this cracked up old hollowish kind of log thing. It's from a eucalyptus tree from my front yard and the part you see me cleaning right now um, I believe was when a branch broke off during a storm sometime. Eucalyptus are notorious for their branches breaking off. I'm just as happy to get those eucalyptus away from my driveway and into bowl format. Anyway, I cleaned out the hollow with screwdriver, chisel, a dental pick, got a bunch of crap out of it, and cut it into a blank. That section where the branch broke off has a really interesting shape and I'd like to preserve some of that in the final product. Now normally you don't cut round things without support on the bandsaw but this does have a flat face so I was feeling safe about uh, cutting it out. Now take a little bit more crap out of it. Aha! It fits! Okay, so I'm going to add some tape across the top to hopefully help keep it from floating when I add the resin. There are a lot of voids in this, so this is my experiment to try to get them filled as much as I possibly can with resin. Don't think a pressure pot is going to cut it. So, what I'm going to do is use a vacuum pump first to try to pull all the bubbles out and then afterwards I will put it under pressure. Now all I have is a pressure pot so I can't see um, I can't see what I'm doing when I do the vacuum and I know they bubble up and over from uh, videos I've seen online of other people doing um, degassing and stuff like that so I have to take it very very carefully as I attempt to uh, fill these voids and use the vacuum I can't just um, take it down to maximum vacuum and know it's going to be fine because I'm sure it's going to boil over or bubble over so what I'm going to do is I'll do it a little bit at a time. I'm going to take it up to, or down to, I suppose, uh, about five pounds, minus five pounds pressure, and then release it, and then repeat, 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 and then work up to maybe 10 pounds after I've done that for a minute or so. And that is what I did. That was my overall method. I put this on there to uh, keep it down. I noticed it was floating even with the uh, regular tape. So a little more pressure. Now you see how far it has filled up. It looks almost full, but when I pull it back out, it's going to definitely have absorbed quite a bit of that. I'm going to use a trash bag to hopefully, if it does overflow, protect the inside of my pressure pot. Here I'll get the vacuum pump and I will start the process I mentioned of pulling a little vacuum, releasing it, pulling a little vacuum, releasing it repeatedly. I won't uh, make you sit through the whole of it, but I'll give you a little demonstration. Now after I worked the pressure up a little bit, I put it under pressure, uh, yeah, under pressure, added about 50 pounds and let it harden. Now, 
it did absorb quite a bit in the wood. And so I think this method seems to be working pretty well. I'm going to add some more resin and see how it does. A couple drops of dye, a little mica powder. Not much. I don't see. I think I need too much. I want to keep a little transparency to it. It's kind of interesting when a bowl has a little transparency to it and you can see the light through under the right conditions. Now you can see it looks quite full yet again. Lots of tape on it to push it down well. And back in it goes. Same process repeated again. And then put it under pressure and leave it overnight. Wow, that resin really soaked in there. Uh, looks like I need to do another, I don't know, 16 ounces maybe? Maybe 24. Kind of bulged out a bit on the bottom, no big deal. All right, more resin, here we come. Now, unfortunately, after that, I did lose a little bit of the video. I put this on the floor for stability's sake. Oh, look at it fizz. It's really going to soak up that resin. Anyway, um, I put it on the floor and repeated the same procedure. So it's, it's not like it's anything earth shattering, but I did lose a little bit of the video. You'll just have to take my word for it. I did it one more time. And after three separate fills and about 70 ounces of resin, I finally, uh, finally got it full. And spoiler alert, it came out pretty well. So next week I will be putting out the video where I make my, uh, in this case, it turned into a lidded vessel, which was what I had planned all along. It did work out. Um, I hope you enjoy the video next week. Sorry about the shaky shaky. I didn't realize <laughs> how much it would shake the camera when I was taking that out of the, the mold. I think that's just large enough to get to the center. That one's easy. Good thing too, this won't catch on the end.
Okay, this is the blank I created using resin, some mica powder, a little dye, old log, <clears throat> and I put it in a discount ice cream container for molding. Does that look familiar to anybody? Yes, I eat cheap ice cream sometimes. My plan right now is to make a lidded vessel. I think it's got sufficient height to make a lidded vessel. Use about this much for the lid and the rest for the bottom section. Um, might end up being a large bowl. Uh, sometimes the final shape depends on factors that are out of your control a bit. Uh, how does the wood look in relation with the resin as you're turning the shape that you think you want but you know maybe it's all wood and you want some resin in there too or vice versa um, also maybe part of the wood <coughs> excuse me part of the wood is punky doesn't have enough strength to hold on to what you the shape you want to give it you might have to modify your plans maybe you've had a catch um, and you have to deal with these things so in a sense it's part creative process it's part chance We'll see what I can do with it and uh, take it from there. Hope you enjoy it.